and now we are live. So uh, this is a Google Drive. We're going to learn about Google Drive, but Google Drive is a place where you can keep all your files and folders online. How many people have used Google Drive? Show of hands. About oh, half the class. Cool. So you're going to learn about that this semester. And uh, a lot of our class is going to occur in Blackboard. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you sort of a walk through how our class is going to work. I'm going to show you what you need to do this week and give you an idea of what we're going to do in this class. And uh, so half the class is going to occur in Blackboard. How many people are bored already? <laughs> oh, no. Droning on. Nobody's bored yet? I always kind of had that feeling like when I get in a class, it's like, oh man, same old song and dance. Can go through the syllabus, this is what we're doing in the class, right? Like, do something different. What do you guys want me to do that's different? Anybody know any jokes? <laughs> that's too hard. I, uh, I used to show a lot of videos, but when I'm recording, I can't show videos because then I'm violating copyright law. And uh, how many people have had a video flagged or taken down on YouTube because you put some song in it or something like that? Show of hands. One, two, I saw a nodding head, so we'll count that two and a half, right? So uh, if I show videos, then I gotta stop this video and then it's one big, I wish I could just hit pause, but maybe there's a way I haven't done it yet. So half the class is where? On Blackboard. On Blackboard. Right, so uh, public speaking technique number 4,619. Whenever you want to engage the audience or anybody in the world, ask them questions, right? So that's, uh, I'll try to ask you questions. So what's, what's one of the ways you can engage an audience? Ask, ask questions. questions. Cool, let's check in. Another way you can engage an audience? I probably shouldn't tell you this. Use that phrase, and everybody's like, what? <laughs> what shouldn't you tell me? That's it. That's the phrase. Well, I shouldn't tell you this. That's how you engage an audience. You say that, and people are like, what shouldn't you tell me? So the other half of the class is going to occur here in My IT Lab. And you go to My IT Lab, and then you click Sign In. And uh, in the Microsoft Office 2013. But the first time you do this, you're not going to click Sign In. You're going to click Register. And, uh, and I might as well jump over to the, the class and show you this. But here's the syllabus. And if you click the link, it'll pop it open. And uh, you can buy the course materials for this class will cost you $75. So that's the minimum entry fee. That's the minimum admission price. That's the ticket price to get into this class, 75 bucks. Uh, we worked really hard to bring that down. It used to be a lot more. And uh, so that, that's pretty good. And if that's a barrier for anybody, I don't know, come talk to me and I'll sh teach you how to sell things on eBay and Amazon or something. But $75, and that will get you access to my IT lab and an electronic copy of the textbook, 75 bucks. If you go over to the bookstore and pay 100 bucks, you'll get access to my IT lab you'll get an electronic copy of the textbook, and you'll also get a physical copy of the textbook. So I've been told. Has anybody bought this at the bookstore yet? Cool, you paid 100 bucks, you got the textbook. That's a pretty good deal for a textbook, all that stuff. Cool, you have the textbook with you today? Yeah. Awesome, I forgot mine, let's see it in my office. While you're getting that out. So the first time you come to my IT lab, you're gonna click register now. And uh, you'll need a course ID. So you get that course ID here in Blackboard under My IT Lab. Right there. And it's got basically the instructions I'm telling you right now. And you click on uh, right here. There's course ID. And depending upon when you're watching this video, you might have a different course ID. So just look in Blackboard if you're out there in TV, YouTube land. Look in Blackboard and get your course ID. So you'll need your course ID, and then you'll need an access code or a credit card. So if you bought it at the bookstore, you'll have an access code. If you didn't, you'll put in a credit card. You'll choose Microsoft Office 2013. And then you'll enter that course ID that you just saw here in Blackboard right there.
how close can we get? That's it. That's a cool little trick. If you're ever doing presentations, that's on a Mac, and it's under settings, accessibility. and zoom and use scroll gesture with modifier keys to zoom and it doesn't show up in the videos online this is only in person so you're not quite getting the same experience online sorry about that uh, so that's the first time you go to my IT lab and then every other time you'll hit sign in Microsoft Office 2013 you'll enter a username and a password and then it'll be you'll be brought here and you won't see all these courses, you'll just see one, and, uh, and then you'll click on it. So ours is CIT 15, 2015 fall in the cloud, 4145. 4145, that's it. And you might have a different one if you're watching this video online. And so then you come in here, and you won't see all these things right here. There's little people with a line through them. That's like, I'm in teacher, I'm the teacher, so I see all this stuff. And, but you will see course materials and grades, right? And student fact. So really, what else do you need? If you're having problems with my IT lab, the student fact is helpful. What does FAQ stand for? Frequently asked questions. How many people already knew that? Cool. How many people just learned something? Anybody? It could be new for you. All right, so frequently asked questions if you're having trouble with, with my IT lab. And if you're having trouble with my IT lab, my IT lab, my IT lab support. And then you'll follow students, support students, contact technical support, and they want all this information, contact technical support, Pearson 24-7 technical support, and get started with technical support, contact us, Select your country, United States, and I want to give you a call, and I want it for my IT lab, and I am a student, and call this toll-free number. They don't make it easy, do they? I don't know if I was going to get there. That's like a lot of digging around. 844-292-7016. So if you have trouble with my IT lab, that's how you... Uh, you could call them. And then basically they'll say, talk to your instructor. <laughs> or they might tell you a little bit more. I think they pay somebody just to sit there and say, talk to your instructor. So then we have course materials. And, uh, and I guess this is loading up. There it is. And you'll see these different folders. And so there's the e-textbook right at the front. And so you come in here, and you can see this textbook online. And may I borrow yours? Sure. All right, cool. And this is the textbook. Thank you. It's, uh, I'll be gentle with it in case you decide you want to return it. It only pays $75. Here's the textbook. It's technology in action, 12th edition, complete. So the only place you want to buy it is where? Bookstore. Bookstore or? The digital version online, right? Through the link there that's provided. Hello. Hello, I'm Joshua late for your class. Joshua late for your class, fine to see. Glad to have you. We're recording this so you could all watch it all again later and see everything you missed. That's the textbook. And there's PowerPoints there. Nice thing about the digital version, right? Here's the I don't know, e text. And then it says pop up locked up there. So let me try opening link and new tab and see if that does it. E text, you know, let's try that one. See what happens. I don't know. I'm not going to play around with this anymore. Maybe I will. I'm curious. Wow. So, a uh, nice thing about digital things is you can do something like Command F. What does Command F do, or Control F on Windows? Search. Yeah, so it searches a page. F stands for find, and we can even see that up here. Edit, find, and there's the shortcut key. It gives you the shortcut out to the right, Command F. And so I could do Command F for suite. Ah, found suite on the page, S-U-I-T-E. And so if I'm looking through the textbook, if I have a digital copy, you might be able to do that.
Control F or Command F, Control F Windows, Command F Mac, and you know, find an answer to a quiz question really quick. That's helpful. All right, that's a nice improvement over textbooks where you kind of got to read and thumb. It's like, where's that keyword? Okay, there it is. Sweet. Next, next, next. Oh, there's the answer to the quiz question. So that might be something that you use the textbook, digital textbook for. How many people, that's cool new information? Let me see your hands. Yeah, that's totally cool new information. I like that one. So there's, a, there's the textbook, and click back there. And then, this is where you earn your money. So half this class occurs where? Blackboard. Blackboard, right? So let's just not confuse because I'm showing my IT lab and we're saying Blackboard. But here's Blackboard, and you can see it's Blackboard's right there, Blackboard. Half the class is Blackboard. Half the class is my IT lab. You can see my IT lab right there. So half your grade comes from Blackboard. Half your grade comes from my IT lab. So if you look at my grade here in Blackboard, and it says 80%, don't think, sweet, I got an 80% in the class. Because what? Half your class comes from Blackboard. That's only half your grade. So 80% divided by half two is what? What's half of 80%? Half. What's half of 80%? 40%. 40%. That's what you've earned on the Blackboard side. And then on the My T Lab side, let's say you had 100%. What's half of 100%? 50%. So if you had 80% on Blackboard and you had 100% on My T Lab, your overall grade in the class, half of the grade comes from Blackboard, so half of 80% is 40%. Half the grade comes from IT Lab, so half of 100% is 50%. 40% plus 50% is? 90%. 90%. You got 90%. You got to add those two halves together. And at the end of the semester, I do that for you and then submit the grade to the registrar. But throughout the semester, you'll look at Blackboard and say, okay, this is what I got at Blackboard. You look at my IT lab and say, this is what I got in my IT lab. And you'll just kind of do that little math in your head. Have your grade my IT lab, have your grade Blackboard. This is my grand class. Yes, the first question of the semester, you should win a prize. What's up? So once I install the uh, my IT lab on my computer, unlike Blackboard, I can go to another computer and go on Blackboard. I wouldn't be able to do that with my IT lab, right? Because Yeah, no, I do think you need to do, do like some software setup in my IT lab. Yeah, so uh, let's see. Improving educator username, my T Lab, whatever, feature support, and uh, that's 2013. Set up your computer. Yeah, so it looks like there might be a little setting up. I used to play with it. If there is something you got to install, then yeah, only on computers where it's installed. You can install it on multiple computers, you could have your computer on your yacht. With my IT lab on it, you can have your computer in your cabin in Aspen with my IT lab on it. And you can log in in either one and access all your same data. So uh, this is where you earn your money in my IT lab. Always a very good question. How do I earn my money? How do I get my grade? Because task number one, priority number one, is uh, you know make rent. Right? You want to get a good grade. That's it. And then once you have a good grade, okay, now we got time for luxury learning, right? Like, okay, I got my whatever you want, A. I did what I need to do for the week. Now, you know, kind of knocked all that out for all my classes. Now I want to go back and learn a little bit more deeper on this subject right here and actually go in depth a little bit more. So uh, where you earn your money in my IT lab is assessments. Training, I don't care about training. I don't care about training. You don't get any credit from me for training. Do it, don't do it, doesn't matter, right? Assessment, that's, that's where you earn your grade. So here's the Windows 7 assessment. You can, you can, in all these assessments, by the way, except for this one last assessment here called the final exam, all these assessments you can take as many times as you want. And you don't see the final yet because it'll only be available the last two weeks, all right? So you can take all these assessments as many times as you want, and the computer will always keep your highest score. So if you're like me, you'd be like, okay, well, help to hell with the training, I'm going to go straight to the test. Let me take it. Let me see what kind of score I got. Ooh, 42%, not so good. Let me go back to the training and figure out what I got to learn. Take the, go through the training, right, quickly maybe, just that, 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 okay, got it. Go back and take the test. Ooh, 68%. Got to go through the training a little bit more thoroughly. 
Go back to the training. Ah, that's what I missed. Come back, take the assessment again. Okay, 88%. I can live with that. That's good. Right? And the computer will keep the 88%. Or you might just get like a 100% right off the bat. I don't have to be training on that. I know Windows well. I don't want to make you do work for something you already know, but I want you to have the resources available to learn it if you don't already know it. So show me you know it. That's all I care about. So you come in here to take the assessment. You click the link, and it should launch up. And you'll, it'll ask you, like, how do you uh, click the start button and stuff like that. It'll teach you little things probably like, you know, control F. So this first week, this is one of the things you need to do right here, Windows 7 assessment. That needs to be done by Monday to stay on pace. Can I add that little bit to stay on pace? Because there's no deadlines. There are no deadlines in this class. There are no deadlines in this class. If you're in my online class, right, you're not in the classroom like you all are right here. If you're in my online class, uh, we do have a deadline in the online class. One deadline every week, and that's for the discussions. And they're by Sunday night at midnight or before I grade them. But in here in the in-person class, no deadlines. Just the end of the semester. So I'm going to tell you, we're going to have a, uh, sort of this is what you should be doing each week. But if you're like, you know, having a crazy busy week at work or your family's in crisis, and it's like, man, I just can't get to it this week. Cool, double up next week. No big deal. Doesn't harm your grade. No big thing. Life happens. All right. So you'll need to do that this week to stay on track. Windows 7 assessment week one. And then uh, the following four weeks, week two, week three, week four, week five, right? You're basically knocking out one of these th a week. We're going to learn about Microsoft Word. And then we'll learn about Excel, week six, seven, eight, six, seven, eight, nine. Then we'll learn about Access, 10, 11, 12, 13. Then we'll learn about PowerPoint, 14, 15. And then that's it for all these. And in exams, don't forget exams, every week we got a chapter quiz you need to do. So week one, what's the first thing you have to do this week? Sign week up for my IT lab. Sign up for my IT lab. And what's the assessment you need to take? Windows 7. Windows 7, right? <clears throat> So you might write that down if you're taking notes. Windows 7 assessment, that's something you gotta do this week. I'll uh, get out my beverage while you get out your binder. <coughs> Show me how it worked in the lab. Okay, I think I got it. Live from New York. It's Monday afternoon. What's up? What's the operating system requirements for the minor IT lab? Yeah, um, best if you're using Windows. Well, I got Windows. It's yeah. an older version. Oh, uh, then you could, I don't know. Uh, so that's a great question. Yeah, we could go to my IT lab and uh, system requirements, so under support, you know, we're doing Microsoft Office 2013, and uh, player setting, other requirements, CPU, bandwidth, screen resolution, so once uh, Intel Core i3 or equivalent, i7 giga, 1.7 gigahertz, 2.5 gigahertz preferred, 2 gigabytes of RAM, 4 gigs preferred. It doesn't say anything about an OS. Thank you. But okay. Windows, Windows 8, Windows 7, different browsers. So it works with Windows 8 and or 7. Which one do you have? Um, I think I have like XD or something. Yeah, that's <laughs> really old. Yeah. You're one to just maybe try to do it in the lab or I'll in class. I'll figure it out. Thank you. Or find a friend. 
All right, so week one, you got to do Windows 7 assessment. Week two, you want to do chapter one quiz. Chapter one quiz will be based, all the quizzes are based upon this textbook, right? So chapter one in here. And, uh, and that's, that's it from my IT lab for, for week one, is just Windows 7 assessment, and then under exams, uh, chapter one quiz, and this other stuff we'll get later in the semester. And then week one over in the Blackboard, you can see here on the announcements page, it says week one. Uh, you can kind of rewatch all this information I'm telling you right now if you want in a shorter fashion and with me wearing a baseball cap right here. I mean, that's not reasonable. And, uh, and then under assignments, this is basically all you do unless you're in the online class, you also have discussions. But uh, in the in-person class, all you have here is assignments. And you can see here all your week one assignments. And you might be like, well, cool, but how do I actually upload a photo of myself with my name on the picture? And you can watch this video to see how you do it. And you can click that. And it takes you to video on YouTube. It shows you how to do it, and you do it. Pretty straightforward, right? And so it's just getting you used to let me watch something, learn, do it, submit it. And uh, there's some really great assignments in here. That's all week one. And you'll notice your last week one assignment is at Code Academy. And if you're going to work ahead, don't go into the JavaScript stuff yet, because I might be changing that in the next couple of weeks. But i got to get the semester rolling. Because further down, we hit JavaScript. But I think I'm going to maybe keep you all with just HTML and CSS, because there's some new stuff out there which I think is neat. So I just got to use it in then. So anyhow, how do you do the Code Academy training? You can watch the video, but you're going to go to Code Academy for this assignment. And welcome back. stories about people who started out here and uh, then you know took their skills and are actually doing things like made a life with it, a job you know so here's HTML and CSS and you're gonna do this one and so you'll start it and you'll just start right here you do this first one introduction to HTML both of these and uh, so you just start in and the way it should work is it'll give you hints about how this place works and gives you a little description and then gives you instructions about what you want to do and then you have to do it so to the right we have test HTML file you can see test HTML change the text on line 2 the bit between the strong text to anything you like this is dope yo I don't know what slang you guys use today but when I was growing up people said dope uh, what do people say now this is cool they still say cool, right? Dope's not probably a good phrase. It's better than others that people have used for similar sentiments, which have even worse associations. And you see it change. This is what it looked like on the screen. What do people say? Seriously. Dope? You know people don't say that anymore? Still do. People do. It's tight. Tight. It's tight. <laughs> Uh, hit save and submit, and you'll see how the test file would look in the browser. Did you see that? The strong tags made our text bold. Save and submit. And so now I'd start my next lesson, and I'd go through 14 of these, and then I'd be done, right, with this first little bit. And then after I'd done that first bit, this one, you can see I'm 7% through. I'd do this one right here. So you're going to learn all about computers, man. We're going to learn how computers work. All the way from, like, how many people have seen zeros and ones associated with computers before? <laughs> and zeros and ones, right? It's technology. So, I don't know. But even if we just type in computers, thank you for showing me your hands. Computers. Uh, oh, like, oh, well, here's one. Now violating copyright laws because I'm showing somebody else's image. 
Zero, one, right? Like, well, what's up with that? Why are they all zeros? And binary ones? code. Yeah, binary code, but why? Uh, on and off. On and off. Open and closed. Yeah, sweet, open and closed. All right, so you, how many people like, oh, okay, yeah, right, on and off, open and close, of course. How many people? How many, other, how many people are like, what's that mean, open, close, zero, one, like open for business? What are you talking about? So we'll learn that, like week two or three, like why zeros and ones, open, close, on and off. So that's, uh, that's week one here. So week one, Windows assessment, quiz one in my IT lab, and then here in assignments, you got your picture, your desktop, your, your Google account in programming. That's where you earn your money. Go earn your money before you do anything else. Don't read the chapter, right? Just you know, The quizzes, by the way, on the textbook, you can take those as many times as you like, too. The assessments in my IT lab as many times as you like. The quizzes covering the textbook in my IT lab as many times as you like. Keeps your highest score. Don't read the textbook. Go take the quiz. Can I answer all the questions already or just look them up? Cool, got my money, right? I got through that, got my score on the quiz. Come in here, do the assignments. Good, done with all that. Do the same thing the rest of my classes. All right, now I'm going to go back and do a little bit more learning. I like, I like that class. I want to learn a little bit more about this subject. Earn your money first. Don't waste your time. Do your job, right? What is your boss asking of you? Give your boss what your boss is asking. And then when you're done with that, right? Like, cool, I did what my boss wanted. Now I'm good for the week, right? My boss wanted this stuff done by the week. I finished it by Wednesday afternoon. Guess what? Rest of Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, I get to, like, you know, kind of have a little breathing room. Right? So earn your money first. When you're done earning your money, earning your grade, that's what I mean by earning your money. You could come into lectures to watch and week of one, you know, if you're in the online class, you might be watching this one big lecture right here. But here's like different videos I put together just kind of covering what I think are good concepts for the first week. So you can see I have a link here to a video by Sarah McLaughlin, World on Fire. Cool video I like. If you haven't watched it, it's pretty neat. And then after that, I have a video on gratitude, which is like 12 minutes long. It's like, what? What's gratitude doing in this class? All right. And then I have a video on the importance of focus and the secret to success and Steve Jobs commencement address. Like that has nothing to do with technology. The fact that Steve Jobs ran a tech company. But for me, all that stuff right there is foundation. Right? Like, how is it that we're successful in life? How is it that people are successful? You want to be successful, study what successful people have done, and then do that. Right? And one of the things that's really important is, is uh, having focus. Having focus. You know, and so learning how to cultivate focus and, and being on task and staying on point. Right? I think I heard that, I don't know where I heard that phrase, but I really like it. Staying on point. Can you stay on point? So easy to get distracted. And what, what makes us distracted these days, right? What's one of the biggest distractors? <laughs> you know? It's like, I should be doing my homework and, ha uh ha, -huh, funny. Oh, I don't want to watch that video. No, man, it's work time. Get your work done when you've earned your money, when you made rent. Now it's time for goofing off. You got some breathing room. But make rent first. Earn your money first. Stay on point. Right? Stay focused. Do you know? Do you know? Do you know that if you take light, light, we are surrounded by light. If you take light and you focus it, right? The, the power of focus. If you focus light, light can burn through steel. Isn't that amazing? That's a laser. That's the power of focus. You want to talk about the power of focus. What do you want to do in your life? What do you want to achieve? What goals do you want to realize? You want to get your bachelor's degree? You want to get your master's? You want to get your doctorate? You want to become a doctor? You want to become a lawyer? You want to make two fifty dollars a year and have a nice house and provide for your family and your kids and have a beautiful partner and a nice car and take good vacations? I forgot what I was going to say, man. Focus. <laughs> right? <laughs> Yeah, focus. You gotta stay on task. That's one of the secrets to success. You gotta stay on task and get done on what needs to be done. That's the power of focus. And you know, like look at what successful people have done. You know, how have other successful people done it? I don't know. 
And I think gratitude, so this is kind of like the foundation, just getting the right mental frame set. And if you want to succeed at something, okay, well, how do, how do I go about it? Every week, you got to prioritize. What's number one priority? Knock it out. And then after that, you got the breathing room, right? Earn your money. Make rent. Do what you need to do to get your grade. Stay focused to that. And then priority two after that, okay, now i got a little breathing room. So this is kind of like the, the foundation. And then gratitude is, uh, is just being thankful for what you already have. You know, um, enjoying the life you've got. And it's easy in our consumer society to feel like this lack, this one. We don't have enough. And that's by design. They are marketing to you all day long to tell you you don't have enough and you should have more. You know? And because, um, you know, a content consumer is not a good consumer. Do you want, do you want this new, do you want another Pepsi? No, thank you. I'm good. I'm content. They want you to be discontent. So there's this uh, cool website, Gapfinder. You guys want to see how lucky you are? Gapminder, sorry. And uh, Gapminder World. And this is like the power of computers. And here's statistics. And I uh, can't quite remember the phrase, but this is like taking data and, you know, how do we visually convey data so it's easier to consume. And really, that's full screen, that's it. All right, so this is an income per person right there. Here's life expectancy. And then, you know, this is 2013. And you can see the different regions of the world, like here are all the Americas, the yellows. Here is a, like, you know, Sub-Saharan Africa. Poor, you're poorer and you don't live as long, right? Like your income is less and your life expectancy is less. But if you're over here in the yellows, hey, that's better. Or you're over here in the reds, right? Or the greens, you're, you're better. Here's America. Here's Japan. Here is China. Here is India. And that's 2013. Well, what about back in the 1800s? Nobody is living very long nor making very much. You're living in, like, you already won the lottery. You're living in the best area of the world at the best time of the world. Pretty much, you know. And you can play this. And you can watch how the world changed. 200 years of uh, humanity, of history right here. The income per person, life expectancy, 1850s, right? Uh, I don't know where America is. Let's find America. There we go. There's America. We could even come over here and we could trace the United States as it changes over time. But then all the other countries are more dimmed out. But you can kind of see how the United States changed. I hope that was World War One. Here comes World War Two. A big drop in life expectancy during World War Two. You see that big downward. There is the. Great flowering of China, as Mao Tse Tung, or however you say that dude's name, right there. He told all the artists, oh, make art, all the bohemians. You know, we want China's art and bohemian culture to flourish. So all they, they all came out, and he gathered them up and killed them. Oh. You know, you put the cheese out for the rats. Not that I think they're rats, I don't. But that's the philosophy he used. I think that's what happened right there. I might be wrong, but yeah, so you're living in the best of times. So after you've earned your money, you can come in and watch this stuff right here. And what will it show you? I don't know, kind of some of what I've shown you right here. Is foundation, right, gratitude. You have a golden opportunity. I like that phrase. You know, you have a golden opportunity to pursue your education. There's plenty of people in the world right now who don't have running water, who don't have food, who don't have shelter, who can't come to school, much less have a good meal or clean drinking water. In Cambodia, one in five under five passes away because they have waterborne illnesses. Like you can't drink the water out of faucets in Cambodia. Here, you get to drink the water out of faucets. You get to come to school. You get to choose what you're going to do with your life, with, with your future. So you, uh, you have a golden opportunity. You've already won. Um, focus, dedication, persistence, secret to success. Drop by drop, the bucket gets filled. 
you put little drops in, and it might be discouraging if you have that short time frame view. Yeah, I've been working at this three months, putting a drop in every day, six hours studying day. There's hardly any water in the bottom of that bucket, right? And then maybe you give up, kick your bucket over, and go back to, I don't know, whatever job, right? But if you stick with it, keep coming to school, keep studying, keep adding those drops of water, what happens after time? You'll be like, wow, look at it. A drop a day for four or five years, this bucket's full. This bucket's full. I learned so much. I've come so far. So that's a phrase one of my teachers used to use. Drop by drop, the bucket gets filled. I really like it. So the last two things I want to convey to you all. Anybody have any thoughts on all that? I've been doing a lot of talking. Any comments? What's up? So what would be this website that you're using? This is, uh, uh, right here is um, Google Drive for the presentation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the one before that was gapminder.org. Yeah. Okay. Anybody have any other comments or questions? What's, uh, what's the best thing that you learned, or one of the things that you've learned that stands out to you so far? Somebody in this room. Somebody in that room. <laughs> The, the get minor. Cool. Somebody in that room. Uh, I don't know exactly where it's at, but basically, like you said, you know, we can just take the test over and over again, and then maybe go back and learn the stuff if we want to. Yeah, right on. <laughs> that Somebody... was great. So shortcut. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Make rent first, man. Then after that, you can relax. Somebody in the back room. What have you learned that stood out to you? <laughs> Somebody in the other back room. Come original. All right. Somebody in front of them. The row in front of them. I should quit, dude. I'm not stopping. <laughs> I, I think it's cool that you can take classes online. When I started college in 1980, it wasn't even the internet. So I like this a lot. Better. There was. Nobody knew about it. Oh, I, I hear you, brother. <laughs> what about the front? Oh, yeah. What did you learn? What's the uh, well, you, you learn how to time manage yourself. Yeah. 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 You got to manage your time well. Uh, so Google has calendars in here. Shoot. Google Calendar. So you just type Google Calendar, but I'm just going to show you an image so you guys don't actually see my calendar. Just Why would I not want you to see my calendar? Why would I not want that to be on YouTube? I don't know who you are. I don't know who's watching this on YouTube. Ah, he's gone all day on that day, huh? Hmm, okay. <laughs> I don't know what the heck this is. It just came up. So there's Google Calendar, right? Time management. Scheduling your time. How many people use Google Calendar? You will. That's one of the assignments in this class. All right, front row. Something you learned today. Anybody? Anybody else? Something you learned today. Learned, but I'm interested in the zeros and ones. Zeros and ones, cool. Piqued your interest, right on. So let's start a little bit about. Let's talk a little bit about tech. This will go pretty quick. Tech is a tool, and like any tool, it can be used for good or for bad, right? So a knife is a tool. It can be used for bad. It can be used for good, right? A gun is a tool. It can be used for good. It can be used for bad. It can be used unskillfully, right? Uh, nuclear bomb. I don't know what category you put that craziness in. This is interesting. The world has been in danger of a nuclear accident on several occasions. In 1979, for example, a training tape mistakenly placed in NORAD's main computer. NORAD's main computer. North America Defense, or whatever the heck NORAD stands for. NORAD wiki. North American Aerospace Defense Command. A uh, training tape left in whatever that stands for. Their main computer fooled officials for several minutes into thinking that the Soviet Union launched a massive nuclear attack in 1979. You almost did not exist because your parents almost got killed, or if you were, you know, alive back then like I was. Yeah, I wouldn't have graduated high school. You would have gotten turned into radioactive <laughs> dust. Because somebody left a training tape in a computer 
Like imagine that, for several minutes, people at the highest levels of the United States government administration were freaking the hell out, right? Thinking Russia's launched a massive nuclear attack, sirens are going off, red lights are spinning, right? Silo doors are coming back on missiles, and then some dude's like, whoa. Sorry, but hold on guys. I left the training table in. <laughs> 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 Sorry, my bad. I almost destroyed Western civilization, humanity as we know it. <laughs> so, same thing happened over in Russia. Somebody left a training tape in, or actually their computers messed up and thought that we were attacking them. But then this guy was the commander at the base, and he said, "We'll, you know, we'll take the hit." I'm not passing up the chain. I'm going to stop it here and let us get destroyed. We're not going to destroy them too, so you can go on. And uh, he was fired and ostracized and, you know, just completely shoved out of Russian society and the military, lost his job, had a nervous breakdown. Because he took that stand, even though he was right, turned out it was a mistake, right? And, uh, but then later, after Russia was dismantled and everything, some massive humanitarian organization gave him like the Nobel Peace Prize or something like that nice. for saving humanity, right? Nice and so this guy's a general, and he says, the world's chief brilliance without conscience. Ours is a world of nuclear giants and ethical infants. We know more about war than we know about peace, more about killing than we know about living. If we continue to develop our technology without wisdom or prudence, our servant may prove to be our executioner. So tech is a tool. <coughs> Right, but it's a tool which we got to learn to use skillfully, and it can also be used unskillfully, right? So, like any tool, it can be used for good or for bad. And what General Bradley's speaking to is something that's been spoken to, you know, throughout history. We see it in movies all the time, right, where technology can turn uh, against us. We create something, a tool, and then it's, you know, used for bad purposes or it comes back and bites us in the butt. And, uh, I don't know. You might think of a movie where that's a theme. <laughs> Let's hear it! Ultron? Like the Avengers the versus Ultron? I don't know anything about that movie. Okay. <laughs> oh, uh, Terminator? Uh, Terminator? Terminator. Sure, that's a good one, right? The machines take over. Mm -hmm. Or Alien, you know, the, the company puts uh, Android on the flight and the Android it's sort of saying, hey, or iRobot maybe, or, or uh, 2001 Stanley Kubrick, you know, where the computer decides it needs to kill all the crew, and then one surviving crew member, Dave, Dave is trying to turn off the computer, and the computer's howl to howl's like, I'm sorry, Dave, I can't do that. <laughs> you know, but Dave's like, you know, and then Dave's going to turn off the computer, and the computer's like, uh, Dave, I really think you should reconsider. Why don't you take a stress pill? No, why don't you sit down, take a stress pill, take a stress pill, and think think things over. Then eventually, Dave goes in and starts turning off the computer, and as the computer's dying, right, its voice gets all slow and creepy. Right, as the memory's being pulled out by Dave, it's like, pulling out the memory because the computer's already sucked all the oxygen out of the machine of the spaceship so Dave's having a little really capsule thing. And uh, you know what song Hal sings as he's dying? The computer? What song does the computer Hal in 2001 sing as he's dying? Daisy, Daisy. I don't know the rest of it. <laughs> why, why does Hal sing Daisy? It's pretty good. Right? Because the first computer to sing sang Daisy Bell. And you could go and you could watch it. Right? So it's like, oh wow, man, it's all connected. So when you see computer geeky stuff, HAL 2000, Dave, take a stress pill, sit down, think things over, right? Computer geeks will refer to this stuff. Um, and if there's this really nice TED talk, TED talk, Aaron Koblen. And he has this TED talk, visualizing ourselves. You can watch this on your own time. And in here, he recreates this project where he has uh, he group sources or outsources to crowdsources. That's the word I'm looking for. 
you know, people to recreate this Daisy song, and everybody sings one little bit. And, uh, it's cool talk. So, what happened in my presentations? There we go. So, uh, text a tool. Prometheus is a myth about uh, fire being stolen from the gods and given to the humans, and fire is this tool which can be used for good or for bad, for cooking food, for giving us life, for keeping us warm, or for waging war and destroying things. Right, and for that, the god Prometheus, I think, if I have it right, got his liver eaten out by a big bird for the rest of eternity. Every day, when he would go back the next night, the bird would come and eat his liver out again. And um, but that's a myth, kind of speaking to the same thing. That tech is a tool, right? And tools are powerful. And how do we use them? And we've seen how we've almost. Uh, you might think, well, that's kind of outlandish, right? I don't quite get it. Tech is a tool, but hey, we almost blew our ourselves up with nuclear bombs technology because of a mistake, a computer mistake. Somebody left a training tape in a computer, right? Or on the Russian side, a glitch in a computer. Um, and so a text tool, well, you might think, well, that's kind of high level. I don't know when that will ever apply to me, right? But when you use computers, you got to use your head, right? This machine has no brain. you got to use your own. So are you using it or is it using you? That's kind of the question I like to ask. And so how does that apply to you? Right? Like texting and driving is like driving drunk. And it's super easy to do. But it's a weird kind of drunk. So it's like being drunk for just like five or ten seconds and you're paying attention again. But it's so easy to look down at your phone, you know? Laughing out loud, no, I'm not busy, I'm only driving. Right? I like this one. <laughs> You know, the, these things bring us, uh, bring those who are far closer, but take those who are close and make them more distant, right? They bring those who are distant close, but take those who are close and make them more distant, right? They're close to people who are distant, but they're not, but they're distant to people with whom they're close. <laughs> that makes sense, right? Really, Al Gore? The president's being inaugurated. What, what text message do you really need to check? Right, in the background there? Opening up his phone with the presidential. No, dude, that's not. You're like, pay attention. Show up. Be present with the present moment, right? <laughs> Don't check your text. Turn it off. Put it away. You're driving. Put it away. You're at some social event. Hang out with the people you're with. Yeah. Anybody ever had that? Hold on. Yeah. No, I'm in class. No. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, this weekend. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. <clears throat> No, they're talking about what? Like, wouldn't you guys be like, what are you doing? Right? But that, how many people have had that happen with a friend or somebody? You're like, oh, yeah, all right, yeah, no, I will tell you what happened, how my grandmother passed away. And then they all of a sudden are on a call. You're like, what? Facebook, that's kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> Stop, Dave, I'm afraid. So, you know, that's one way that tech impacts us, right, is this entire texting and driving. Seriously, uh, don't text and drive. I know it's really hard. Don't dial and drive. But I like that quote. Basically, Einstein saying, we're getting close to being your generation. And so that's one way technology impacts us, right? Another way is like, how do we know, like, technology is so powerful today? How do we know it's real? It's not real. You know, this is one of my favorite photoshops right here. <laughs> Come on in. The guy's about to go postal. That's not cool. So on the left is the original photo. On the right is what Time Magazine did with it. Well, let's darken them up, make them look more sinister. Why is dark sinister? Racist. That's Time Magazine, right? Photoshop. Like, let's make it into more of a dark character. Here's uh, Oprah's head on somebody else's body. <laughs> you looking good, Oprah. And, right? You all know that one from 2001. But <laughs> was he? Or maybe somebody just photoshopped it. <clears throat> you know, can we believe pictures anymore? This picture was stitched together. You can see this guy's back here, and this guy's back here, and it ran in LA Times. 
That's not a real picture. That's not the news. That's fiction. That's Photoshop. It's not a real picture. <laughs> oh, dandelion. When Google used to be in China, they're not anymore because China said, you need to let us see all and whatever. And Google said, help y'all. And they left. China used to have, it still does, but it's a tourist attraction now, the Great Wall of China. But now what they use, right, is the Great Firewall of China. Keep those inside and keep the outside outside. Great Firewall of China. Firewall prevents certain traffic, internet, network traffic from getting through it. And so, but back in the day, China, when Google's in China, if you search for Tiananmen Square in China, you get this. But if you search for it in the U.S., you would get, or in other places in the world, the Tiananmen Square protest. So China wanted Google to change, you know, what search results came up and delete parts of history. And Google said, no, we're not going to do that anymore, so they left. That's a big market to walk away from. And then this entire thing about Edward Snowden and NSA and digital monitoring and Big Brother. Got a lot of just wacky information here. Is that a concern? Like being monitored? Big Brother? Where's the phrase Big Brother come from? Anybody know the book? We're just taking a guess. Is it 1984? Asleep. Yeah, George Orwell, yeah. 1984. Big Brothers monitoring all of society. With the suicide boots and stuff, right? I don't remember. But this is kind of cool. George Orwell camera. So this is George Orwell's, um, where he, you know, it's a museum <laughs> or something now where he grew up. There's that, and there's a camera monitoring his house. It's irony. Um, yeah, so like back in the day, 70s and 80s, or 70s, 60s and 70s, the FBI, uh, yeah, the FBI used to like, who are the social protesters? There'd be social movements protesting Vietnam, and then they'd go and, you know, have FBI agents dress up as hippies and infiltrate the socialist, socialist, social protesters, and keep do, you know keep dossiers, folders, files on certain individuals who are the organizers and the protests take pictures. The FBI doesn't have to take pictures anymore. The FBI doesn't have to send out agents to figure out who's doing what. You guys are all taking the pictures for them and tagging everybody in them. I'm posting them to Facebook and telling everybody what yeah. everyone's doing. Check me out, I'm at the protest. Okay, now we know who the protesters are. Do you have to worry about, you know, you know, the quite you know, do you have to worry about people in power having information about you? I don't know. But back in McCarthy's days, McCarthyism, if you're a socialist, bad news on you, man. They had the entire McCarthyism, the red, whatever they called it. Right? People in Hollywood lost their jobs, McCarthy. Right, so practice of making accusations of subversion of treason without proper regard of evidence. It also means the practice of making unfair allegations. So whatever that is, because they're trying to get rid of socialists, they were way afraid of socialists. Or you know, in World War II, if you're Japanese, like here's the New York Times, uh, Saturday, February 21st, 1942. Army gets power to move citizens or aliens inland. Roundup of West Coast Japanese. So they rounded up all the West Coast Japanese. So here's what we did. And then we stuck them into concentration camps. And we took away their property. And a lot of times they didn't get the property back. That's not cool. That happened right here in America. And this is what happened in Germany, right? You know, the wrong information. Like, oh, that's what your religion is? Good, we're clean, we're getting rid of the people of that religion. So humans don't have the best track record of being respectful of diversity. 
you know? Huh? A sheriff with a cop. Oh, a Jewish person. That's the star of David on his, oh. mm. on his lapel because he's Jewish. He's got the It's from Schindler's List. Yeah, I think that's what that, yeah. that's from. So. The gun didn't work in that scene for that, like, the bullets didn't go off or whatever that's right. Oh, really? Yeah. But the prominent one, like he would come out on his patio and just take his rifle and just shoot people walking around the camp. That's right. Oops. So there's all kinds of uh, instances of that. What do people do with information? But it's a tool. It can be used for good and bad. Both sides use it, right? Arab Spring, you know, people are using this to, you know, do positive for the people kind of social movements. I don't know that whole story, but. You know, so what kind of information is out there about you? Would George Bush have become president if there was a bunch of Facebook posts and YouTube videos of him snorting cocaine, as he was alleged to have done, and partying hard when he was young? Will you get into college or get that job if the, your employer looks on your Facebook page and goes back in your history and sees this one or that one? Right, like, maybe we shouldn't hire that guy. You know? Or... You know, this person who said, I hate my job, and did you forget that we're friends and I'm your boss? Don't worry about coming into work. Okay. So, let's see what else did I have up here. Tech is a cool tool. So that's all tech's tool. Do we use it? Does it use you? It has advantages and disadvantages, risks and benefits. And then the last thing is we're at a turning point. This is a turning point in the history of humanity. There have been a couple of turning points in the history of humanity. A turning point in the history of humanity is where we're going one direction, something occurs, and we go another direction. I don't know. So the Neolithic Revolution, where we went from being hunters and gatherers to more of an agrarian society and settled down and started farming, right? That was one turning point. The invention of the plow, some people say, oh, the plow allowed one person to farm for many. Um, uh, what are other turning points? Industrial revolution. Industrial revolution, thanks. It's not on the assembly line. Right? And I was like, oh, we kind of really changed the way we live as a society and, and mass production, right? Assembly line, like even this classroom is a reflection of the factory model. You know, where you all come in, there's a real linear process, starting point, ending point. Same sort of process is applied to every unit and we certify the quality A, B, C, C, D, B, C, A, you know. So uh, uh, the turning point we're at now, industrial revolution, assembly lines, factories, very linear start point, end point. And the one we're in now is the information revolution, very nonlinear, right? No start point, no end point. Start reading something and just follow hyperlinks and then just stop whenever. And then it's always there. Come back to it whenever you want. It's always accessible. You know, you all carry around, holy cow, so much access to information in your little phones right here. Um, so how's, how's that going to change the future of the world? It's kind of interesting to think that we're in the middle of a massive shift in, you know, um, in how society, the world will live. There are some turning points. All right. So the last thing you need to know if you're in the in-person class is you need to bring a 4 by, or 3 by 5 card. So get a buy a stack of 3 by 5 cards. It'll cost you a buck or two at the bookstore. And, uh, and then every day, you'll write down your name, make a legible, first name, last name, and the date. And you'll write down, hey, this is what I learned in class today. You know, something that stood out to you. Like, hey, I really like this. I like that. I like learning this. Or you write a question. Can you say more about this thing? Or I don't understand that thing. Right? And that's how I take attendance. So turn those in at the end of the day. I'll go get some in a minute and pass them out so that you guys could. I'll give you your first one today. But when you come back Wednesday, you need to bring your own. So. For this first week, what you need to do is Windows 7 assessment in my IT lab, also in my IT lab, quiz chapter one, in Blackboard assignments for week one, and that's going to include some Code Academy, HTML, CSS, and uh, and then you need to buy index cards and bring those on Wednesday. So those are the things you need to do. 
And if you're in my online class, you need to post to the discussion. And um, and uh, if in, in class, uh, if you use any technology when we're not supposed to be using technology, I'll say, hey, are you using your cell phone? And you would say, yeah, it's totally texting, right, or whatever. Then what you have to do, because the rule in class is when we talk about stuff, we talk about stuff, and when we don't, when we're doing stuff, we can use tech, right? But we take a moment to just like, no more tech, let's just connect as humans and talk about some ideas. And, uh, and if when we're doing that, lecture, connecting as humans, talking about ideas, if uh, you use your phone, I say, hey, are you using your phone? And you are, then you have to stand up and you have to, just like you're, because you basically you're addicted. You, you know you shouldn't be doing it. I told you you shouldn't do it. You did it anyhow. You're like the drunk, right? You're like, you know you shouldn't stop at the bar. You know you shouldn't have another beer. But you did it anyhow. And dang it, there you are, you're drunk again. So just like in an AA meeting, uh, I'll say, hey, are you using your phone? And you'll be like, yeah, I'm using my phone. And you'll have to stand up and go, hey, my name is Todd, or whatever your name is. My name is Todd, and I'm addicted to technology. And I'll say, hey, welcome, Todd. Glad you're here. A lot of us have that problem. <laughs> Plus, you know, partly using a tool correctly, we gotta learn some self-restraint, right? Mm -hmm. Know when to use it and when not to use it, when to put it away. And so we'll be practicing that in class. So that's just policy in the class. Uh, last thing I want to do before I turn off the camera is I just want to look at the key words here for chapter one and um, read them out and go over ones which are good to know about. And uh, I'm going to skip a lot of these keywords. So if I don't read out one of these keywords, then you don't have to worry about it. Augmented reality, what is that? Anybody know, heard of augmented reality? So like Google Glass, Google Glasses, remember those? How many people knew Google Glasses? Yeah, so. Augmented reality is taking reality and then putting a layer on top of it, augmenting it. So some games and phones will allow you to look through it, and then you just see basically a video of the room, but it'll put things on top of it. So you might see like, oh, hey, there's the bar, and they're offering two-for-one special on appetizers at the mall. I don't know. That's augmented reality. Or Google Glasses does augmented reality. They place a big emphasis on being computer literate in the first chapter. Literate just means you know how to read and write. So computer literate means basically you know how to you know, work with computers. Um, they talk about the digital divide. And the digital divide are the haves and have nots of technology. Right? Obviously, in Africa, there's a lot less access to internet technology and computers than here in America. And over on the poor side of town, there's a lot less access and availability than over on the rich side of town, right? Like a kid growing up with the rich parents, there's going to be a lot of computers around the house, and there's a lot of kids growing up in the poor area of our very own town, you know, they don't have access to any computers. Though their parents probably have a cell phone. Uh, information technology, so sometimes people are like, what's the difference between information technology, information systems, and computer science? So information technology and information systems so this is the CIT-15, Computer Information Technology. So information systems, IS, and IT, those are both kind of like, how does business use technology? How do businesses use technology? And, and what's the ap application of technology? How do we use it? And comp sci is how do we make technology, right? So a lot of times comp sci is with mathematics and engineering, like how do we actually create the circuits? Or how do we write the programs? So that's the difference between comp sci and information systems and information technology. And that's all the key terms from chapter one. Totally easy chapter. Ooh, I picked your book a little. I think it's okay. <coughs> I got another one if they don't take this one back. Is that three? Is that four key terms? Yeah, those are the ones that I just think. Those are those are the things. I want to leave you with practical skills. I don't care much for the bull crap in academia or life. Right? Like who cares about those phrases? Those are stupid. So the rest of those phrases in there, I don't care about them. Right? That doesn't mean you won't be tested. You know, the quiz might not. It's probably going to ask you stuff. But uh, those are the phrases I think, oh, you should be aware of like, the digital divide. You should be aware of that. You should be aware of the difference between ITIS and comp sci and 
what, what those are. Because that's stuff you'll use in life and you should understand it. Anybody have an interest or predilection for programming in class? Nobody? Think, ah, oh, programming might be a cool career choice. Nobody? Really? Can you rephrase that? Yeah, are you interested in creating software and writing programs? Nobody. It's a good career. Make really good money. Oh, and it's well, fun. Yeah, I'm interested. Yeah, it's highly <laughs> demanded. Highly demanded. So if computers resonate with you at all and you kind of like it, if you learn how to use computers, you could. Uh, there's there's uh, lots of job opportunities. You do really well, particularly if you're a female minority, uh, because 90% of people in computers are white males, and so. If, you're a female minority often, uh, uh, even though companies or people don't, aren't supposed to practice affirmative action, a lot of times people are real impressed because they're like, wow, you had to overcome significant social obstacles to get where you're at, because most people have it, you know, who are from your demographic. That's tricky territory to talk about. Anybody, anybody have any questions? What's the difference between this and 12? 12 is a watered down version of this, and this, this class actually transfers better, so 15 is better. And you're going to learn more thoroughly in 15, go to a little bit of a quicker clip. And so if the, you struggle on this class, you're like, whoa, this is way too fast for me, and you should think about transferring into a 12. But if you got it in this class, stay in this class, because it'll serve you better in the long run. You'll learn more, and this class will transfer better. You already took 12, so there's going to be some repeat from what you learned in 12 to here. Unfortunately, somebody advised you poorly. Next Monday, we're going to have uh, Gerard Johnson. Johnson, thank you. Gerard Johnson come in and talk. He's a counselor. Just stick his head in for a minute. A good guy. So he, if you have a counselor, a counselor will advise you well about which classes to take to get to where you want to go. You should all think about getting your bachelor's or your master's if you can. That helps you out a lot in life. It's a pass key to a lot of jobs. Anybody else have any questions or comments or thoughts? Uh, Code Academy, is that yeah. part of IT or is that? It's just a website out there that some guys built. Okay. It's free. It's not a part of our grade. Well, it is because it's an assignment. So you'll do the assignment and then you'll show me, hey, I did this assignment, I did the next one, I did the next one. And you'll turn that into me and I'll see, oh yeah, there's the picture that you did that part. Okay, I need credit for that. I hated it in your summer school. Right? Oh, you were in my I, summer school? I hated it. Class. <laughs> All right, well, in here, man, you'll have time for us to work together. Hopefully that'll, that'll uh, help you. You know, when you have somebody to answer questions right, right. on the spot, it'll make it look yeah. really fun. It's more like a personal inquiry about you. Yeah. Um, we didn't really know much about you. Do you sure. ever teach? Or do you do more with what you know? Yeah, thanks. Um, AAMA, you guys know that from Reddit? Ask me almost anything. AMA. AMAA. No? Reddit? Reddit's a cool website. And they have this thing sometimes. Uh, ask me almost anything. But uh, <clears throat> you could come in here and you know, it's just kind of like user filtered content where there's different little pictures and, and uh, <laughs> news articles, whatever, you know, that's rising in the popular, popular zeitgeist. It's kind of fun. Um, so a little bit about me. Uh, I was born, you know, I grew up right on Van Ness. And uh, so this is kind of like, you know, I did it. 44 years, I've gone 33, or I've gone four blocks. <laughs> and uh, then moved out to the country when I was a kid, went to Clubs High, and then went to UCLA, and, and didn't like big city LA. And I didn't know what I wanted to study when I was in school. My friend was up at UC Santa Cruz surfing and telling me about how good the surf is. So I transferred up there. and finished up my education, bachelor's in economics from Santa Cruz with a minor in surfing. 
not official. It's not official. I did well in high school, you know, I just worked hard, kind of treated school like my job. My dad asked to go to work, my mom asked to go to work, all right, time for me to go to work. You know, so I just kind of be like, all right, man, that's my job, you know, go to class and do my do my work. And, and uh, so I got a scholarship going to UCLA and UC Santa Cruz. And, and then um, uh, after that, I didn't know what I wanted to do with the bachelor's in economics. I think that's a good point is like, you know, one of the things I realized in hindsight is it's really good to study something where you get a skill. Like, you know, if you're a doctor, right, or a surgeon, you got a skill. Right? I know how to do something other people can't do. If you're a poet, it's like, every, everybody can kind of write poetry, kind of. And it's like, what are you going to do? With it? And look at the career opportunities when you're deciding what you want to do, right? Like, what are the career opportunities for the field I study? So getting a skill with good career opportunities, right, something that people need, that's a, that's a really good thing to choose. So I got done, and... Thought about joining the Air Force, but then I just ended up in Hawaii surfing and waiting tables. And finally, I became a manager of a restaurant, and I didn't do that very well, and I didn't like it. And uh, I was also kind of like a lost guy when I was young, because I grew up pretty hard. My dad was like raised feral, and uh, he was raised pretty hard. And, uh, and then, you know, that's what he knew, so he raised me hard. And when I talk about being raised feral, he grew up on a farm, my, my uh, whatever, back of the generation, homestead, it had no running water, had no electricity, no indoor plumbing, they used an outhouse, had no gas, right, no utilities, it's just a wood house out on the prairies of Canada, they farmed wheat and pigs and animals, and then my mom, my dad's mom died when he was five or six, so he just grew up in this house with a bunch of boys, and it was just like a frat house with fist fighting and you know, drinking and womanizing, and you know, that's how he was raised, right? And so he raised me pretty, you know, and like, you know, you, you animal or kid gets out of line, you, you beat the kid, you know? So that's kind of like what I grew up, spare the rod, waste the kid, or whatever that Bible saying is. And uh, I don't know why I started telling you that. <laughs> so I was kind of lost when I was a kid, right? I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life, and I was over in Hawaii, and and uh, that life wasn't working out. And then I, I realized, man, I can't solve the problems I got in my head from, you know, on my own. I can't solve it on my own. So I moved back here and I went to grad school. And I also went into therapy and got some, just started talking to a guy, right? So you, I don't know if you ever saw, like, um, what's that movie with Ben Affleck and Matt Damon? Good Will, Good Will Hunt, right? Where, uh, what's the comedian, Robin Williams? Is a therapist. So it's that kind of deal, right? You just talk to somebody. So he helped me get my head on straight. I just share that with you all because, and then the other side of my family is from the South, right? My mom's side, that's why sometimes you're Southern in, in my voice. But uh, I share that with you because that's, that was kind of hard for me, and I didn't know that that was an option, and that totally helped me. Like just, and we have counselors on campus that you can go talk to, and there are people who study like psychology and how to live your life with less suffering and more happiness, right? And um, and so, I don't know, if you happen to be in that situation, you could go talk to those those people and they'll help you realize, oh, wow, I can make different choices or I can do things differently. And that can often be a big help in becoming successful. So, uh, anyhow, start talking to that therapist dude and I went back to school, grad school, got my master's in business from Fresno State, and again, just treated it like my job. I'd wake up at 8, Monday through Friday, and work till 5, and then go to class 6 to 10, right? So I just work my books, 8 to 5, like a job, take an hour for lunch, right? That's that thing, focus, right? And I got straight A's all the way through grad school, except for 1B, and I graduated as the Dean's Medalist, which means it was the top of the class, right? They said out of all the graduates, who the best. And, um, and then after uh, doing so well in school, I worked private industry for a little bit, did some various jobs, but then a job came available here and I thought, and my current job is just like totally dysfunctional and, 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 and uh, imploding, and like the father and the son who ran the business no longer talked to each other, and so right when that was like being destroyed from the inside out, a job came up here, and I knew somebody who taught over here, a family friend, and he said, you know, I saw it as a good job, and 
he helped me sort of get my application together and came over here and applied. I've been working here since 2000. I started here when I was 29. I've been here 15 years. And uh, I also teach web programming. And I've taught Android. And, um, you know, I teach out at Fresno State uh, as adjunct faculty in computer science for their, their web programming stuff. And I've recently been learning, like, um, this language called Golang, which was created by geniuses at Google, and it's just this really great language for doing web programming. And uh, so I teach that class Tuesday and Thursday, tomorrow here, and next week starting out at Fresno State. And uh, this summer, we did this thing here. Summer Web Bootcamp where we put on this 10-week boot camp for web programming. And uh, we brought in some really great speakers. So we spent 10 weeks every day, five days a week, just learning web programming and coding. And yeah, man, so I learned a lot doing that. But that's, uh, that's pretty much my life. And, and uh, just a couple of years ago, like 2009, or, yeah, end of 2009, I uh, saw this girl I thought was really cute. And that's how it always starts, right? And, uh, and I was walking my dogs. I lived just, you know, over there on Harvard Street, kind of by Van Nuys. And uh, she, she lived on next street over. And I looked back, and she looked at me, and, and I kind of raised my hand, and she raised her hand. And then I, well, she was on her phone, so I kept going. And I got a, a message on Facebook, right? She's kind of like, I'm on my phone. And uh, I got a message on Facebook, and she's like, was that you today? I'm like, oh, gosh, I already know her. <laughs> I thought I know her. And it turns out, like, back in the mid-'90s, when I was in my early 20s, I worked at this restaurant, and, uh, and she was dating the restaurant owner, and we met. And so, uh, you know, that relationship was over, and she was single, and so we started hanging out and dating, and, and we ended up getting married, and now we've got two kids. And, and our, 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 our daughter was born like 10 days ago. And our son is like two years old. Congratulations. Thanks a lot, man. So it's like been a, it's been like a long kind of journey, you know, but it's uh, just gets better. It's turning out well, story that ends well. But. You have a German Shepherd. Huh? You have a dog. I used to have a German Shepherd, but now I've got like two unruly mutts. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Henry kind of looks German Shepherd. -y. Oh, okay. Yeah. You probably saw a picture of Henry. Yeah. Yep. Tell us a little bit about me. Hey, so let's take a minute and uh, uh, we're gonna do a little bit of a in-person thing. And this is uh, kind of what you get from the discussions online, so we can cut out the video. We'll just do that right now.